This video is for Lesson 5 of the GCSE Waves 1 topic entitled Calculating the Speed of Waves on a String. By the end of the lesson you should be able to tell me what a standing wave is and how it's formed and be able to calculate the speed of a wave along a string using a standard wave. To create a wave on a string all we need is a piece of string which is tied at one end which is this end here and we need some kind of uh, device or indeed your hand just to move up and down to create those waves like that. Now what you may not be aware of is the fact that when the waves actually strike this end they reflect off them and I've got a little animation to show you that. Okay so if I send a pulse of waves along the string like so, here we go nice and slow, you can see the kind of peak travels from left to right. Now when it gets to this end here the wave actually reflects, but it reflects in a, a special way. If you notice, look, we had a peak coming in, and when it reflects off the end here, we now get a trough. And with this particular system I've got set up here, the damping is zero, so there's no energy lost to this uh, either end, and so the wave will carry on indefinitely. In real life, of course, there would be some damping, and you wouldn't see that continuing. Okay then, so if we look at this diagram here, this shows us uh, the incoming wave or incident wave in blue travelling from left to right. When it strikes the reflective surface or the end of our string here, it will reflect back on itself. And again, notice that where we've got um, the high peak here, as it were, we get a, a trough kind of thing here. Now, it's important to realise that when that reflected wave bounces off the surface, it then interferes with the incoming, original incoming wave. And you get something called a standing wave produced. So this blue wave here, traveling that way, interferes with the reflected wave coming like that. And you end up with a pattern that looks like that. Okay, now you will surely watch a video which shows you this happening in real life. So you effectively see a pattern like this on the rapidly vibrating string. Just a couple of things to point out to you here. Um, the ends are what we call nodes and at these nodes here the string doesn't appear to move. The opposite of a node is an anti-node so you've got one here and here. That's where the string is vibrating at its maximum. Okay, Remember this pattern is all caused by these two waves up here, the incoming and reflected waves, interfering one another. Now this is quite an important um, bit of physics really because it has implications to how we build buildings and in particular bridges. And if you're interested in looking at a particular example how a bridge was badly made, type into Google uh, Tacoma Narrows Bridge or follow the link if you're following on the PowerPoint. Okay, and so to find out what a standing wave looks like in practice, I'd like you to watch the video uh, with a link below. And the bit about the waves and the string starts at 7 minutes and 17 seconds, but you may wish to watch the first part, which reviews uh, a little bit about the uh, ripple tank, uh, which we did last lesson. So have a look at the video there, and then come back to me. Okay, I hope that made sense. Uh, now we need something for your notes. If you can put the title Measuring the Speed of Waves on a String, it will be quite practical. And could you outline the apparatus and the method that we use to create standing waves on the string and how we calculate the wave speed? Okay, so if you'd like to pause the video, do me a little sketch of the apparatus there and these bullet points here, which explains what you have to do. And then I'll run through the method as how we actually calculate the speed of waves on the string. Okay, so if you'd like to put the subtitle example, I'll talk you through how we can work out the speed of waves on that string using the information in our diagram here. So first off, uh, you notice the length of the string is 0.3 meters. Now, can you see that there are one, two, three, four nodes on that string? So if the total length is 0.3 meters, then the distance between each pair of nodes, the three pairs there, is 0.1 meters. 
0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1 gives you 0.3. So the node-to-node -node distance is 0.1 meters. Now as it says here, to calculate the wavelength of the wave, all you need to do is to multiply the node-to-node -node distance by 2. So the wavelength is double the node-to-node -node distance. So it's 2 times 0.1, and that will always be the case. The wavelength is always double this distance there, the node-to-node -node distance. So in this case, 0.2 meters. So the wave speed, as you should be familiar with by now, is equal to frequency times wavelength. The frequency is given to us on our signal generator, which is driving our vibration generator here, and we're told in the question here, in the information, that it's 20 hertz. So the wave speed is 20 multiplied by 0.2, the wavelength, double the node distance, and that gives us 4 meters per second. Okay, to finish off, I'd like to give you some practice on that. There should be a Word document attached to your homework, on Shoma homework. Um, if you've not got access to that, you can't print it off, then uh, you can use this slide here to make a copy of the diagrams and produce the solutions. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the very first one. Um, essentially all you're doing is following these four instructions. So let's go through number one together. So the first thing it says is to label the nodes N and anti-nodes AN. Well, okay. If I do that with diagram number one there, there's a node. That's this point here, remember? There's another node and there's another node. Now the anti-nodes are of course there and there. But we're not terribly interested in the anti-nodes per se to solve this problem here. So we've done that. Part B, work out the distance between two nodes. Okay, well the total length of the string is 1.2 meters. And we've got two pairs of nodes here. So if that distance is 1.2, then the node to node distance here must be half of that, 0.6. Going on to step C, calculate the wavelength of the wave using wavelength equals two times the distance between two nodes. Well, our node to node distance is 0.6 meters, so our wavelength is double that, 1.2 meters. To work out the wave speed now, we use our familiar friend, wave speed equals frequency times wavelength. The frequency, we're told in the problem here, look, Okay, for each of these it's different, so be careful. The frequency is 10, the wavelength is 1.2, and we end up with an answer of 10.2 meters per second. So can you either print and complete the worksheet here, or can you make a copy and have it set out in your notes exactly as it is? Okay, so you should now be able to recall that when waves travel along a string, they can reflect and produce a so-called standing wave that is made up of nodes and anti-nodes. You should be able to explain and describe an experiment that enables you to calculate the wave speed using the equation wave speed equals frequency times wavelength. Remember, the wavelength is double the node-to-node -node distance.